Hi, welcome to the IPC's Proud Paralympian Sochi Series. I'm Muffy Davis, a three-time Paralympic athlete, and I am here talking with Norwegian cross-country biathlete Niels Eric Olsen. Niels, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing today? How has the games been for you? Uh, it's been uh, the last couple of days have been well, last week actually has been really good. So yeah, it's uh, sad it's almost over. It's almost over. I know it goes fast, doesn't it? It does definitely. It was uh, almost been here for yeah two weeks today, and it feels like yesterday I got here. So, have you been to Russia before these games? Uh, yeah, we were here last year for a test event, and in 2011 we were in uh, Kanti Mansisk uh, for uh, the World Championship. So were these conditions, snow conditions at these uh, Paralympics similar to what you had last year at the test event, or was it very different? I know we talked a little bit about how much it's changed since we've been here. Yeah, no, we had uh, pretty much the same conditions starting, uh, but now we have full winter again, so that was, uh, that was kind of a surprise, but it was a pleasant surprise, because it, uh, it was a lot of slush up there for a while. <laughs> And what does the slush do? Educate those of us that aren't as familiar with cross country or biathlon skiing. Um, how is how does the slush make it harder? Uh, well, if you can, if you see uh, compare it to uh, to alpine skiing, you have <coughs> wider skis. Ours is pretty narrow, like four four centimeters wide. Uh, so skiing on slush, it doesn't carry much uh, underneath. It just you go straight to the bottom and. Uh, yeah, for the the first uh, first distance, we were skiing in conditions that were we had snow up to our legs, so it was uh, it's heavy, really heavy, and the snow gets really slow. So it was good that uh, the winter came back. That's nice. Well, great. Well, how do you think your games have gone so far? You have two silvers and a bronze. Um, are you happy with that? You have one more race, correct? I have one more race tomorrow. Yes, uh, it was it's a good. I had a, a little disappointing start with uh, being number six. I was uh, not not in good shape that day, uh, even though it was close. It was I had nothing to pull on this last lap. Uh, but yeah, coming back from that, getting two silvers and today a bronze with the team, it's uh, I can't complain. It's been really good. I re I really wanted the gold, uh, gold medal yesterday, but. Uh, the winner is my best friend Gregory Wojcinski, so then I I can't complain. That's so you are very close. Are you guys all close competitors? Yeah, I said me and Gregory are are close, ones, and it's uh, it's fun when he and he sees, sees like this. It's been uh, he's had a cu couple of tough championships lately, so it's good. I'm good at that. Well, I don't. I think you know, two silvers and bronze is pretty awesome. But how do you think tomorrow's going to go? Are we? We got the colder weather still. How does this race favor you? Is it your favorite distance? No, for me, it's the. I am more a biathlete than I am a cross country skier, so I prefer those races definitely. Okay. But, uh, it's a 10k skating, and then I can. It's like it's easier because uh, in biathlon you have to focus on the both the skiing and the shooting. Now I can just switch off half my brain and just go skiing, so it's <laughs> a lot easier. But then again, there's uh, there's more Russians, strong Russians in that uh, in that uh, category, so it's gonna be tough. But um, uh, yeah, if I have a, a good day, I might be able to get podium tomorrow. But um, I would need a really really good day to be able to do that. Uh, well, maybe we'll have it. But will you explain to us a little bit about biathlon because it is it is such a tough sport. I've heard it compared to Sprinting a football field and then stopping to thread a needle. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you do that? How do you calm yourself down so much that you you can shoot straight? Well, before the before the race, we we have to uh, to plan it like two different parts of the race. Uh, so when I when I step into the range, I just I don't focus on the the skiing part anymore. I just focus on the shooting. Uh, so. Yeah, 100 meters before the the range, start calm down, breathing, and focusing on what's going, what I'm going to do on the range. Uh, check out the wind and and everything like that. See if I have to do corrections for the sights. And uh, yeah, so it just uh, you just have to stop focusing on what you're doing out in the track and just calm yourself down and uh, and yeah. It, try to hit the target. I think you make it sound a lot easier than it really is. I don't know how you get your heart rate up so high and just calm yourself down, but that's why you're the amazing athlete that you are. It um, takes a lot of training, it does. 
Well, we've heard your hero is Ole Inar Bjorn Dahlin, and he yeah. competed here in Sochi at the age of 40. Um, do you have any plans to keep going? You think you could be doing that still at 40? Uh, I don't know. I I said in Vancouver that these are that was my last that was my the last games. Uh, but here I am in Sochi. I also <laughs> said also said I'm not going to South Korea, but looks like I'm not gonna get a, be able to get a gold medal uh, here. So yeah, maybe I want to go to South Korea anyway. So uh, I feel I'm so motivated. It's the most fun I know. So and I love training and competing. So it's uh, it's not impossible. Will you share with us a little bit about your training regimen? Like, are, how often do you train? What does your um, training consist of? Are you on snow most of the year, or is there dry land training? Yeah, a lot of a lot of dry land training. I uh, I'm in uh, on snow now until yeah the middle of June. From June to uh, October, it's dry land, mostly roller skiing. Uh, do a lot of mountain biking and uh, and running in the mountains and yeah, mostly in, in the uphills and rough terrain. Uh, yeah, a lot of sh shooting during the summer to get uh, to get that work done. And um, from October, we start focusing more on uh, on the competition side of the, so we train less, maybe just one one time a day, uh, and hopefully we can do races every weekend. And that's, uh, so when December is, uh, is when, usually when the, the World Cup and the competition starts. So then, uh, yeah, just use the, uh, the weeks for recovery and try to make a peak if you have, there's a event like this or World Championship or something like that coming up. So. How does it, how does it, as an athlete, so tomorrow, your last game, your, your last competition here in Sochi, yeah. You haven't ruled out Pyeongchang. Like, so do you instantly change your transition focus to the next four years, or will you take a little break off or kind of evolve? It depends a little bit what uh, what the snow conditions are back home. Uh, <laughs> if uh, if we still have good snow, I will probably start working on what I didn't think worked out this season, and so I can just so I don't stop uh, and then start to refocus on that, uh, but just try to work that out straight away because that would that's easier and better. Uh, but usually April is a little more like a down season. You you don't train that much. It's not that serious. But from first of May, it's it's on again. So season starts first of May. That's not a long break in a four-year cycle. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so if you, you want tired, do you ever get tired? I mean, obviously it gets hard. But what what keeps you focused and motivated for those next four years? Uh, I just love doing this. I've been doing, uh, I've been yeah doing biathlon, competing in since I was nine years old. So it's it's pretty much all I know. <laughs> how did you get started? I mean, I, at nine years old, how did you pick up a gun, a rifle, and start shooting? Uh, well, I have our older brother who also started biathlon, uh, and he's always been my role model. So so for me, looking up to him and seeing what he did, I wanted to try the same thing. Uh, I'm really lucky because he's now here as my waxer has been for the last four years, so it's good to have him on the team. And uh, yeah, it's he was pretty successful biathlete from Norway, so it's just I just followed him. <laughs> That's wonderful. What advice would you offer other um, aspiring biathletes or cross country skiers um, that may have an impairment? How would how would you advise them to get involved in, and to get out there and maybe become Paralympians themselves someday? Uh, just have fun. That's the most important thing. It's for me, uh, for both me and my brother, we have never had any pressure for from our parents. Both my my dad, my uncle, and my grandfather was were also athletes and pretty high level in Norway. But we never had any pressure from them to go out and like do what they did. So it's been, uh, yeah, we've been just out there having fun all the time. And yeah, it's like I, I've always said, I never. Never set the date that I'm gonna stop af like after that race or after, but I'm gonna stop the day I don't think it's fun anymore. That that sounds like really great advice. Um, you know, you are our first Nordic or cross country biathlete that we've had on the Proud Paralympians. Can you share with us a little bit about what it's like up at that endurance village up at your Nordic village? How has it been? Uh, it's really nice up there. We're uh, 
yeah, it's uh, the whole World Cup circus is gathered in one place. Uh, we live in really nice uh, yeah, rooms and condos. Food is really good. Can't complain about that. We have a short wait up to the stadium, uh, and training conditions up there are good. So it's been a little short time. So like the last week, we had only had an hour of uh, possible for skiing. That's a little short, but still, the competing is the most important part. So it's good. What you, sorry, what do you do on the off days when you're not competing? Like, what does your day look like? Uh, get off. When, Pretty early, oh, pretty pretty early. It's around eight. Go breakfast. Uh, usually go on half an hour, forty minutes on a on a bike, just spinning to get the to body going. Some some run. For me, it's uh, I prefer biking because running is not that best for my feet. Uh, and then yeah, if we have training later uh, in, the, in the afternoon, just go back to bed and yeah, watch movies and hang out, just try not to use as much uh, this energy, and then uh, yeah, training, dinner, <clears throat> physiotherapist, meetings, and that's the day. <laughs> Sounds pretty boring, but it's, uh, it's if you want to uh, have a good race, as you, it's, that's the way to go. So the real focus is on resting and recovery and, and getting yourself strong for the next day, right? Yeah, for me that's, uh, I know a lot of uh, the other guys are hanging out in the um, in the public areas, playing pool and video games and stuff like that. But I, for me, this is so important that I, I rather, rather stick to my plan and instead of uh, using too much energy on the other, other things. So with that, a little bit, do you have any kind of race strategy or any rituals that you go through before a race? Um, superstitions or ways that you get yourself riled up? Yeah, no, I'm not really that superstition, uh, but I have, like, the day before the race, I uh, I always have to plan what I'm going to do, like, have a, from the more, from when I get up into, to go to the start, I, and I always plan and go through the race the day before, so I know how I'm, I, like, have an idea what I'm going to do and try to stick to that plan, so it's, uh, yeah, it's... I'm, I tried to go do races without doing that. They went well too, but it's it's better. I think I have more control. Then. So, have you really enjoyed your time here in Russia? I mean, you've been in several different Paralympic Games. How does it stack up? Um, and and looking forward to the future for a new one. How how are you feeling? Oh, it's been really good. Uh, we had we were uh, expecting. Things from last year when we were here, it was kind of exciting to see how far they came. You know, we come from that, and because when we were up there, then it was pretty much only the the stadium that was done. Uh, it, they've done an amazing job, and it's yeah, it's been really good. I I would say this is probably one of the best uh, Paralympics I've been to. You know, Russia is really proud. They put a lot of energy into this Paralympic Games. Um, and they are just dominating in the cross-country skiing. What do yeah. you think is the reason for that? Uh, do you have any thoughts? Uh, they have put a lot into it, and they have a training regime that is uh, far beyond anyone else. Uh, I, I talked a lot with them, and uh, I met them during uh, some altitude training camps in uh, during the summer. Uh, we were uh, convened at the same, same place. And they told me that and after, when I was done in that place, I was going home for one month and then going to the next. They were going home for one week and then stay one month in the next place. Okay. That's, uh, it helps. <laughs> so they are, yeah, they're really good at what they're doing and they have a lot of young, good athletes. That I think one thing is the, what they're showing up here, but I think for future games too, as South Korea and, and the next one to come after that, they will be dominating too. Will you, um, I know they are just doing amazing, will you share, you brought up a little bit about altitude training, share with us the importance of that and, and for your sport, I mean does it really help? Yeah, it's, uh, if you come here without any altitude training before you, you won't set a chance at all. It's uh, the first the first day when you go to a place that's above, yeah, around 1400 meters and up, uh, going up, walking up the stairs, it's, uh, it's like running a marathon. It just, yeah, just the muscles they just cry and beg for more oxygen, and you you get really fat, fatigue, and yeah, it's uh, so it's important to do a lot. Uh, we had one in June, 
for three weeks. Then a new one in August, September for three weeks. And then December, we had a new one for, uh, that was four weeks, I think. So and it's... Oh, does it just entail going to altitude and doing your workouts at altitude? Is that really just so that you're living and breathing in that altitude? Yeah, you have to get used to that. So, uh, and it's it takes at least ten days around before you can train as, uh, like you do at sea level in altitude. So you have to go in uh, some time before before the competition. So we went before these games. We were two weeks in St. Moritz in Schweiz, uh, and then. Um, and then coming in here, so yeah, first week in, in Switzerland was really hard, <laughs> but then we were yeah we were a little bit higher than we are now, so that felt good because it was coming down a little bit. So. Well, I have seen some of your Samsung blogs. You're blogging for Samsung, and how has that been? Has it been fun? Has it been weird? Yeah, it's been it's a little interesting. Cause I never done this anything like that before. So it's uh, yeah, it's it feels weird talking to yourself. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. I thought you did a great job. I would definitely urge everyone to check them out. And uh, thank you so much for spending time with us and, and sharing everything. Is there anything you want to say to anyone out there? You want to say hi to family back home or a shout out to anyone? Yeah, just thank you for having me. It's been it's been fun. And yeah, last day tomorrow. So if you haven't seen any events yet, it's been I would definitely check that out. Well, I've been up to Lara. I love it, and I am wishing you the best of luck, and you just have the race of your life out there tomorrow, okay? Thank you very much. I'll try. Thank you. So great meeting you. You too. Bye.